Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Geek Group. I'm Paul Kidwell. I'm Dan Eakin. And we're here today to talk about Arduino processors. What do we got, Dan? Okay, so we have a collection of different Arduinos and Arduino form factors here today. Um, in front of us is my personal Arduino, the Arduino Doom and Love, which is a okay. bit older now. Um, it's been replaced by the Uno and the Pro and various other different upgrades that they've made to it. Um, this is a real simple uh, platform. You apply power here, you connect to the PC via just a regular printer cord here. This chip is the interface between the PC and the processor. The processor, reset button, and then all your I.O. Okay. Um, we're going to actually look at a couple more different Arduinos. So let's... And there's a Pro, and it's the same processor, different package type, surface mount. And rather than having the uh, interface chip to get you to a PC, it has just a little header here that goes through a uh, FTDI cable. Mm -hmm. And it simplifies the board down. It lets it run at lower power. It has a uh, LiPo battery connector right there so you can run battery uh, power operations. This one here is a 3.3 volt version. There's a 5 volt version as well. Okay, go? and so let's take a look at the Mega, which is the, now, the big Arduino. Yes, I don't know how many extra, but there's a whole bunch more I.O. pins down here, here, and here. It has the same standard headers there and there, um, so it's compatible with the other versions. Yeah. We can get them both on at the same time. But it has a greater I.O. capacity. It's got um, more memory. More of everything, more memory, more serial ports, more digital, more analog, all of it. Um, bring the uh, Seed Studio one in. Here we picked one up from uh, Seed Studio. It's roughly the same as an Uno, which is the newer version of the Duman Love. And it has the lower profile USB connector on it as well as a LiPo uh, battery connection. Now and what are the switches here for? To select where you want to draw power from. Okay, and that you have to use both switches in order to make that decision? or uh, That, and I think one of them, the other one is for the uh, reset line. Oh, okay. So you can, it functions as a power switch as well. Okay. If you don't have both. It's reset is moved off to the side. It's got a little side mounted button. And one of the reasons for that is there's um, daughter boards called shields that mount on top of these boards and they You have a couple with you today, yes, don't you? Yes, I do. Okay, good. It's like for the Duman Love, if you take, this one's called a, uh, a proto shield and it's just a prototyping area, a bunch of solder pads and its headers plug directly down onto the board like that and made on both sides. And now you have a prototyping area. Now well, you can use just regular perf board. Yes, you can. The whole pattern is... The whole pattern is a little messed up over here because they got like a half a hole. Yeah, you spacing. just bend the pin a little bit. And you can bend the, bend the pin on your header and it'll fit. They actually sell headers that are pre-bent. Oh, okay. So you have that available. Sure. Um, the thing you'll notice, the reset button that's right under there is covered now. You can't get to it. Right. Well, most shields will put the reset button up on top, like they added one right here, so you still have access to it. What's the other switch doing? The other switch, it, this is a prototyping board, so the two LEDs you see here and this switch are just there for you to use. Oh, okay. There's a solder pad over here for the switch and one for the LED there and there, so you can just wire them straight into your circuit and you have an LED set up with a current limiting resistor oh. and a switch set up for Excellent. input. I guess the uh, maple will be next then. Yes. Now these, it's the same form factor. The, the headers will still fit. So you can use most of your shields directly on it. But it has a, an ARM processor. It's a much larger memory, faster. This runs at 75 megahertz, actually. So it's much faster than the standard Atmel chip. Um, again, this has all three power connections on it, this barrel connector, the USB, and a LiPo battery. And it has a LiPo battery charging 
circuit on it, which is controlled by the jumpers here. So you can plug into your PC or external power and actually charge your LiPo battery directly off Excellent. the board without any extra circuitry. Let's take a look now, at that. This is a, uh, a Fez Panda version one. Um, again, faster processor. This one runs uh, .NET uh, software. Yep. And it's a different programming environment than uh, the other IDEs that these others use. Well, um, the Arduino IDE is a dialect of C, yes. and you can use any of the .NETs using Visual Studio Correct. to program this, yes. which is a little bit more forgiving to starters mm -hmm. if they've taken it Also, a, all these stem from uh, the process uh, programming environment. It's like the Arduino IDE was a subset of that. They expanded it, actually. And the, the Maple is the same thing. It started from uh, process, and it looks almost identical to uh, programming an Arduino. The, the Fez is where we start diverging from that quite a bit. Um, we have a newer version of a Fez as well. This is a Fez Model 2, and it has um, a uh, micro SD card socket built right onto it, um, as well as a whole bunch more I.O. pinned out Well, here. the Fez 1 has those I.O.s. It's just, just not they're the, not populated with headers yet. Correct. So. But the, the big change between the two is the addition of the micro SD card. And then you have one that you picked up that I haven't seen yet. This is a ST Discovery card. They, uh, they ran a promo. They were handing these out for free that people, you know, you had like three days to say, I'd love to have an opportunity to play with this. And this is, um, this is more than just the microprocessor. They have accelerometers and I think there's uh, audio technology on there and there's, um, you hook your programming up to this end and any serial communications up to this end and uh, it actually comes with a program built into it that utilizes the accelerometer that you, um, you plug it in and it becomes a human interface device in okay. the device manager and you wave it in the air and it acts like a mouse All based right. on the... I missed out on this one. Yes, you did. Yes, I, did. I, I wasn't able to get a hold of you that week. Hmm. And it was, a, it was a real fast buy-in. You you, they covered the shipping and everything. So, Text me next time. Yeah, well, okay. Okay. <laughs> so right. to... Uh, to connect your Arduinos or your different processors to your, your computer, there's, there's going to be a USB cable or an FTDI cable. And we don't have an FTDI cable here, do we? I forgot it, yeah. actually. And there's going, to be, there's, there's going to be, you know, every type of USB cable out there. Um, you have your micro, and then you have your, your B type. This is the most common for older Arduinos. And this is what everything's been moving to because it's a smaller profile. Yeah, one of the issues with this guy is when you plug a shield board on top, this is a, a metal case. Yeah, and it grounds out. My binary clock had that problem. I kept shorting out my LEDs. Well, this one misses, but you can see there's very little clearance there. So if the shield overhung any at all, you're going to short out pins on the back side of your shield. So the smaller form factor connector makes things much nicer. Let's go ahead and plug this in real fast and make sure it turns on and everything. Okay. And we can show people what the lights mean. This okay. LED here indicates your power is turned on. And up here is the the integrated pin 13 LED. Yes. In order to start practicing with programming and playing with the card, you don't have to buy any breakout boards or anything special. You can get the software and you can connect it and you can immediately start playing with that LED there. Okay. There's two more LEDs right here, TX and RX, and those indicate when communications are active between the, the, the processor and whatever else, usually a computer, but you can use other things. All right. Um, the development environment for an Arduino is uh, called the Arduino IDE, and you can download it. It's uh, open source software. Yep. It's free to download. Yep. And there's been a recent upgrade. The version I have on my PC is still the old version. We've downloaded the new one, but uh, just haven't installed it yet. So let's go ahead and show them that then. All right. Let's slide the PC over.
There we go. All right, here's the uh, Arduino's main uh, homepage. Arduino.cc. Arduino.cc. And to download the IDE, you have a, down, a download sele menu selection here. And it'll bring up the web page. And depending on what platform you're running, Windows, Mac, uh, Linux, um, you can even download the source code for the IDE if you want. But it's all available right here. And uh, we've already downloaded it for, uh, this is the 1.0. The version we're running is one of the older versions, which I think is. Arduino 22. 20, I think I'm actually running 23. Are you? But um, we'll cover the installation of the IDE in another video. Uh, for the time being, we're just going to use the one that we already have, which is here. And I'm going to bring the menu at the top. Um, where is open? There's file open right there. We have a large number of example programs that have been... Now, you've added to this I've list. I've added to this, yeah. yes. This has a lot of different stuff in it. I'm going to go through a regular file and then examples. Um, yeah, we want the blink. Up here is the examples that come with the, um, the, the IDE, IDE yeah. as you download it. Um, all the rest are examples that I've downloaded um, there's a library that has uh, functions, additional functions available, and when you download those uh, additional functions, they get dumped into this menu as well. So there's examples of all kinds of things. There's a, there's a TV shield that I had for hooking in a, a Wii controller into your television so you can program your own version of Tetris, which I was playing on an Arduino. Did it work well? It worked rather well, yes. Excellent. It didn't accelerate like the real game. And you did, used so I now got a, this library. You just you were able to go just online and find. Just download, find it, downloaded it, and in, integrated it into the IDE. The and we'll one, cover installing libraries in, in the oh, next absolutely. video. Or, right at the top, we have Basic, and the third one on here is Blink. Yep. And where'd the uh, Doom and Love go? There it is. Um, good question. There it is. Um, when you open a file this way, it opens it in another window for you. So I'm just going to maximize that. And this is the whole program. The software is in two sections. There's a setup block that gets executed once at the start of uh, the program running on, on reset or power up. And once this executes, you have loop, which executes over and over again, continuously, so long as power is applied. And this program is like a hello world for a digital board where you don't even have serial communications or any sort of output. The only thing that's on the board to start with is an LED. Right. The LED is wired into digital output number 13. And right here you can see, initialize the digital pin as output. Pin 13 has an LED connected on most Arduino boards. And right there you see pin mode 13 output. So you're basically saying digital output number 13, we want it to be an output. Yep. And the loop portion of the software is right here. And it sets a digital write 13 high, which turns the pin on, waits a second. Then a thousand milliseconds. A thousand milliseconds, yes. <laughs> Digital write 13 low, which turns it off. And then it waits. Then it waits another thousand milliseconds, and then it cycles back to the top and it just keeps going over and over again. So the whole purpose of this program is to just flash that LED exactly. once every second. It's a great way to know if your board was shipped working. Yes. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, a lot of boards come with this program on it, so they, they probably use it to make sure the board works before they package it. It would be it. a good test. In one of the menu selections up here is tools, and you have a list of boards you can select from. Um, you can add to this list as well. I have several that have been added in here at the top. But we want, what we want is the Arduino Dumen Love, right there, yep. using a AT Mega 328 chip. Yep. So we select the type of board we're going to be programming. And then the other thing we want we'll to select. To hook it up to get the Oh, hold on. I'm going, to, I'm going to bring, before you plug it in, don't plug it in yet. 
Right now, I have COM port 1 and 3 on this machine. COM port 1 is a standard RS-232 output. COM 3 is the modem that's on this thing. Uh, when you plug the board in, it um, will find the board. Um, you may have to load a driver for the interface, and that's provided with the Arduino IDE. And hopefully by now, it has come up with COM port 4. So there's our board that we just added. And then to program, to compile and load this software onto the board, it's just one button click right there, which is upload. When it uploads, it'll also verify your code is Yes, it does errors. a compile. Down here in this black area at the bottom, which is slightly off screen, so I'm going to pop it up a little. Um, you get it saying uploading your board there. Binary sketch size, 1,018 bytes of 30,720 bytes maximum. So once it successfully compiles, you can see right here, it tells you how right. large your program is, so you know if you're getting close to maximum. And it's come back and said done uploading. And, and it's blinking. As you can see. Um, can, we, can we upload it again so that we can point out these different All LEDs? Right. Yes, but what I'm going to do is we're going to change these times. Okay. Let's change it to every 100 milliseconds. Okay. So the LED flashes a lot faster. faster. Sure. So there's a save option here and an upload. I'm not going to bother saving it because it's one of our example programs and it would throw a wobbly saying you're trying to overwrite something that's read only. When he uploads it, the board's going to reset. You're going to see the blinking stop and then it's, it's going to act a little odd as it goes through uh, the bootloader right there. And then you can see these lights are flashing because it's communicating with the computer. Yep, it's receiving the program. We're done uploading and we're flashing much faster now. Right. So that was the whole process. That's the hello world for an Arduino processor. Um, let's see, there's all manner of things you can do with this. If just about anything you can think of that you want to do with a microcontroller, you type in to Google Arduino and whatever that thing is, somebody has probably done it and has example <laughs> codes and software and schematics for pretty much everything. And if you're looking for ideas, you can go shopping on SparkFun and go through their sensor inputs oh, and they have all manner of things but those those items are for other videos we have sure. lots of things to show yes so that's it for now i'm paul kidwell i'm dan eakin please remember to rate comment subscribe and donate and we'll catch you next time this video was made possible by a grant from the future girl foundation this video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.